Hi folks, welcome to this week's uh, short tutorial. Um, I'm going to do a little sort of series of these. They might not be um, uh, a series back to back, but I will be able to cross reference in the links below uh, when I do these um, these particular uh, subject, which is all about textures. Why do we use texture, textures? Why are they so important? There are so many ways of creating textures, um, which I'm going to go into in over the next uh, couple of weeks. So what I've done here, and I'm going to show you how I achieved this in a moment. So you're seeing things a little bit back to back here. This is my, the end result. I'll start the from the. Um, I'll show you. Um, I'll take you to the beginning of this in a moment when the video actual video starts. Um, but. Um, yeah, so I've given us examples of uh, wet on wet, okay, wet on dry. These these are wet on dry examples. This one and this one, um, lifting out shapes when when the paint's gone dry. Um, whilst these two here are a wet in wet technique. Um, so um, yeah, stay tuned, and um, I will be going into this in some depth. As I say, it's very important to learn your textures because um, it can make the difference between a you know sophisticated looking painting and something that's just perhaps lacking that little extra bit of quality and um, just giving you a, a simple tonal range here T the tone and strength of your paint does play a big part in your textures um, it's easier to get texture out of a darker area such as this I'll show you you get a quite a clear texture hit out of out of a darker area. If you were to do the same thing to a paler area, it barely registers. So you've got to you've got to bear that in mind. You know that um, there needs to be a tonal value there, not just paint, because some paints, of course, have a a very high pale tonal value. Um, it's got to be the it, it, you've got to think of your colours in terms of tonal um, uh, greys, even though they are colours. A dark red, for instance, would be closer to this area here between seven and nine, perhaps. Whereas a pale red, something like a cadmium red light, would would probably be around here, something like that. So do remember that tone plays a huge part in creating textures. Why do we need textures? We need textures to um, for purposes like uh, preventing an area looking flat. We need to, uh, and at the same time, we need textures to convey um, areas of peacefulness. So you might play a very busy textural area off against a very flat area. If you push these two little examples together, you'd see what I mean. You'd have a textural area and a flat area. These are essential. These are parts of the the balance to a se essential. Um, uh, 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 composition. Yeah, so uh, here we go. I'm going to start from, from the scratch here. I'll start probably with this one, I think, if I remember rightly, and uh, see you at the end. I'm going to show you here some um, some techniques, some wet in wet texturing techniques. So um, I'll start up here. I'm just using a, a neutral mix. There's, it doesn't matter what colour you're using. Um, the depth of tone does matter. Um, you won't get much texture out of weak paint, a weak wash. So you really need to take your tones, if white is um, 0 and black is 10, you really should be uh, looking to create your textures in areas that start around the sort of 3 to 4 tonal value uh, mark. So. I'll show you this in a moment, um, and I'll just set out a basic tonal scale down here. Of say ten gradations. And then um, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. I will call that one two, and then we'll make this one up here even darker. So and you can imagine that this one here is white, so what I'll do is 
that's zero in here. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got nine gradations, which is more than enough for me to put, uh, explain this point um, about um, how you where where the, where the opportunities lie to actually make these uh, textures. Um, it would be very difficult to texture. Well, you, you simply can't texture in an area that's white, um, unless, of course, you're texturing by means of um, it. That would that would be a, a way of texturing on white paper. A simple tapping technique of paint, where you're changing. Obviously, you're adding a tone to the white surface in a textural fashion. So that's. That's the only way you'd be able to texture onto white paper. You have to change the tone. So, um, timing is very important. Um, I'm going to just show you in here um, a texture that you can achieve while the paint is still wet. Underneath it, I'll show you a similar texture or the, the, with the same techniques used, but on dry paper. We'll let this dry out this one down here. So you'll see me using exactly the same uh, effects on dry. So an example wet, uh, of wet paper, of wet paint, an example of dry. So in the wet area, um, as I say, it, it is a, um, a case of timing. I'd have to get all this really wet area out for a moment. And for the first example, I'm just going to show you something incredibly simple. Um, if you wait for the sheen to go off the paper, as it has here, then you take a, a brush. For, I'm using a small brush, a size 5 round brush. I'm just going to tap some water into that. And what you'll see developing here are just blemishes, these sort of um, little highlights that appear that's when the water hits the pigment, the paint pigment, it uh, it just gives these lovely sort of almost flower blossoming sort of highlights to the to the area. Now, um, what a lot of people um, a, a good technique here is to not only use water but to use a colour on top of that. So I'm just I've just picked up a, a cadmium yellow here, and I'm doing exactly the same with that cadmium yellow paint as I did a moment ago with just clean water. Um, you can elaborate on that with other colours, but of course, you know, the more colours you put in there, um, particularly if you go across the, use the full sort of three primary um, range, the, the, if you start putting reds and blues on top of these yellows, you will get a rather muddy effect eventually. So it's always best to err on the less is more. Just a blue with a yellow on top of it, or a blue with an orange on top of it. Um, is usually sufficient. Where would you use that type of um, technique? Well, the <laughs> opportunities for using that particular technique are endless. Uh, and in a in um, a future uh, video, that's what I'm going to be doing. If you follow this little series of my um, uh, t texture um, classes, um, why we use them, how we use them, um, then you'll see me go into these in more depth. This is just a taster for you to see um, what can be done with textures and why they're so important. So we've already seen here um, using water tapped onto damp paint, okay? And as that dries out even more, you'll find that those little droplets, if you keep dropping them in, they tend to sort of be more, uh, they, they, will, um, they will exaggerate you. You'll see them more clearly. Um, the damper gets to a point where you get to work. I'm not going to come to that one yet because it's not dry enough. Um, so I'll show you another technique. I can show you the same technique on both of these, but I'll show you this technique on dry, what I just did a moment ago on dry paper, on dry paint in a moment. So as with this one, I have just tapped in some um, paint onto dry white paper. And um, of course, again, you could simply change your colours here. We could tap some yellow into this area. Um, I'd, I'd warn you of the same thing. I wouldn't get too... Um, if you start 
if you start um, really hitting this area with too many colours you will eventually get a very muddy effect. So I often use complementary as a blue and an orange, a red and a green, um, you know, a purple and a yellow sometimes. And then very carefully I will add a, a third colour which will be a complementary. Uh, or, an, uh, sorry, a, um, a harmonious colour. Again, I'll go into this more in forthcoming um, videos. So, what I'm going to show you over here is uh, another technique. We haven't even started talking about where and when we use these t different techniques, but I will. This is something I want to get into. It is so important to know your, your textures. Um, because placed in the wrong place in your paintings they can make or break your painting. They can take an average, if the textures are used correctly um, they will take an average looking painting into a mar more masterly, more sophisticated looking painting. And conversely, unfortunately, if you get them wrong, if you're applying your textures in the wrong place um, then you end up with all sorts of problems and a very disappointing result. So um, I'm going to speed dry this so you can see what I'm doing here. So this one's dry, dry enough for me to be able to show you uh, this next technique. And that is, um, as, as promised, I'm just going to do the same to this one as I did to, to this one when it, when it was wet. And just tap on the water there. It will, you will get the same effect on this dry paper, but if you take then um, a nice dry tissue and push down hard, little twist like that, and you will get those lift outs, those highlights, those little areas of light. And to all intents and purposes, it's gonna look quite similar to this, um, but it's good to know that um, you can do the same, you can get a similar texture uh, even when the paint has gone dry. Now that's not always the same for all textures, for creating all textures. You can't do, there are some that you can't do on dry paint, others that you can do on dry paint, vice versa. Um, if you want to, of course, you can use the colour, tapping the colour onto this one. Just tap a bit of yellow onto there, you can just see that registering I hope. So on to um, this one. I mean, this one is fairly self-explanatory. There probably are other things you can do to this. I'll show you in a moment. Um, so now this little example over here that I'm going to show you is um, is more aggressive to the surface, and it involves um, the use of scraping, a scraping implement. And now you can use it's quite a popular method, and I, I use it myself quite a bit. Is a cut-up credit card. Um, and you might just want to sort of pull out and move around some of those, uh, some shapes, you know, creating some shapes into those areas. You can do all sorts of things. You can imagine a woodland where you're pulling out the tree trunks. But it must, I must emphasize this point. You cannot do this when the paint is really wet. It has to be somewhere between wet and damp. Um, this area at the bottom down here, because there's a slope, is very wet. There's, there's no way I, I can register a shape there. It'll make the mark, but quickly fill back up, as you can see here. Um, it's a bit like trying to dig a hole in a muddy field when it's still raining. Um, so um, this is, uh, there's another opportunity here for making, for making uh, textures. And even, th that probably goes beyond texture and, and towards actual shape making. But I think you get the gist of that. Um, if it were more textural, what I often do is just push a flat surface onto an area like that, and that in itself will give that'll give some texture. Just pushing down, and of course you can push down uh, with absorbent uh, surfaces like this tissue or cloth, and take lights out of that surface. Um, and I think <laughs> I think you probably get the idea as to where that type of um, effect would be used in in masses of trees in woodlands um, but this it we will get a little bit more in depth with these things because it's all about proximity 
there are different textures for different distances. The same object a hundred yards away in our paintings, say a, a large fully uh, um, a tree fully clad in its summer leaves um, will require, if it's cl quite close to us, a different texture to that of the very same tree if it were pushed perhaps um, 500 yards away or as much as a quarter of a mile away and etc etc the further objects are away from us they deserve and require a different type of texture um, it's it, everything we do with the brush is a texture is potentially a texture so um, I'm just going to show you how we can amalgamate some of these techniques in this one here let me just pick up some more paint here. I'll continue tapping paint into this little box, this little example area. Just add a little bit more of the yellow, just to spice it up a little bit in here. We'll just put a little bit of that yellow in there. Now there are so many things you can do to change that effect. But the idea when using texture is to try and incorporate, um, if you're going to change that, if, if I mean, for instance, a, a very basic example of the use of that particular texture could be in something like a, an old stone wall. Um, but um, it, it goes way beyond that. You, you can start with this type of texture, um, take a, a simple tool like this, like a, a painting knife, and you can start manipulating areas of that texture. So you, you, you're moving paint around like this. You might choose to um, say, well, I don't want it this busy everywhere. I'll do more of this somewhere. I'll, I'll bring the flatness back like this and, um, and, and travel through your, your old stone wall in this fashion. So then you're left with a smaller percentage of the textured effect, which is really important. You know, variation and changing um, the um, change in the texture can bring its very own dynamics to your to your paintings, and even while this is moved around, you, we could run a we could simply run a, a line through some of these areas here, as we did down here. Just get your timing right. Make sure the timing is right. Um, there's further uh, opportunity once you've created something like this, of course, to perhaps some. Um, texture that even further with, with remember this technique where we're just tapping uh, more water onto the surface like this if we um, this is what we were doing on this one over here and so you build these different textures in this way um, as I say remember that everything we do with the brush is potentially a, a textural mark I have this really aggressive hog hair brush here that I sometimes use in my watercolours and um, I might decide that I like this but I might decide that some areas need softening out around the edges perhaps and I would just soften some of those some of that busyness out like this leaving one area more uh, um, sh a little sharper over here perhaps um, Texture, the, the textures are uh, an overlooked, I think, um, part of the 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 artist, the painter's uh, skill set. Um, what you've got to remember too, and again, I'll go into this even more in future, um, is that um, as a watercolorist, we only have one type of texture um, because there are two. There are optical textures. Um, which are more or less like an illusion if you like and the other one being um, actual physical uh, textures um, an oil painter somebody working in oils and acrylics have um, the um, option of creating um, textural tactile surfaces that you can put heavy paint on the impasto techniques where the paint is left to create ridges lumps and 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 all sorts of different um physical textures where you put your hand on you can actually physically feel the, the texture that that's a, a um that that's a, a a physical texture we're dealing as watercolorists only with optical textures 
um, unless you go into the um, area of mixed media, of course, when you, <laughs> anything goes. Um, but for us who like to work mostly in watercolour, pure watercolour, or whatever that is, um, then um, these are some of um, some examples of of how to create texture in your paintings. So please stay tuned for these, and uh, I will be uh, taking this on another step. So just a, a quick recap here. Um, Consider your tonal range when you're texturing. You know, you, you wouldn't be able to get this effect from 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 here, of course, because you've you, you've obliterated completely the area of any white paint. There's no uh, a white paper. There's no white paper showing at all. Um, so, yes, you can texture on 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 dry white paper. Um, you can um, texture into paint that's gone dry areas of paint that have gone dry um, if you know you can you can make shapes um, which is sort of borderline shape making texturizing um, and there's many more which we'll cover in the next session things like the use of salt um, masking fluid um, and uh, and many other techniques so please stay tuned and uh, I look forward to having your company at the next one